Hey friends, happy Thursday. Today is Thursday, March 9th, 2023. And before we begin, I just want to say happy birthday tomorrow to my friend Mary, who you guys know as the Crafty Panda. It's been a bit of a week. And if I'm being completely honest, most of my time in my studio has been spent on putting things away from QuiltCon, getting the studio tidied up, and planning out some fun projects for the very near future, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Speaking of QuiltCon, I have mentioned a couple of times that I was going to put together a video showcasing all of the quilts at QuiltCon, but when I look back through my photos and video clips that I took, I don't feel like I have the right footage to share all of the quilts from QuiltCon like I wanted to do. So I'm probably not going to make that video, but don't worry if you are jonesing to see what those quilts look like. I have two things that you can do. The first one you can do right now. In the description box down below will be a link to a video from Kristen over at IC Stars Quilting. She has put together a beautiful video montage that showcases, I think, all of the quilts from QuiltCon 2023. And the second thing is for $55, the Modern Quilt Guild is selling a book that showcases beautiful pictures and stories of every single quilt that was at QuiltCon 2023. I already reserved my book. I think it's on pre-order right now, and I think those are going to ship out in April or May sometime. I don't know when they're shipping, but I know I'm going to get one when it does ship. Speaking of quilt shows and festivals, I do want to give a huge shout out to Tiffany, Donna, and Ian, and I think Katie from Greenland, and... Quilt Queen 22, all of them have quilts entered into the Sewing Machines Plus Virtual Quilt Show this year, and they would love it if you would stop by, check out their quilt, and if you think it's worthy of a vote, cast your vote for it. Votes are open from March 5th, 2023 to March 15th, 2023, and you can cast two votes a day. So make sure to hop over there and do that. I'll link to the Sewing Machine Plus Virtual Quilt Show in the description box down below. I've been planning a few projects that are going to be coming up and I want you to know about these before they get started in case you want to sew them alongside of me. The first one is a collab I am doing with Erin from Love So Modern. She has a pattern called Radical Cassettes that just dropped yesterday and it features, you guessed it, cassette tapes. It's a lot of fun and definitely has like an 80s retro vibe to it. I think it's going to be really fun to put together. Starting the week of March 20th, she is going to host a sew along that will take us all the way through the end of April to put that quilt together. And I'm a little nervous if I'm being honest about some of the curved pieces because I've never really done it before, but this is a great project to try it on. And uh, she's promised me that it's not as difficult as I think. So we'll see if she's right or wrong. <laughs> I have not picked out my fabric for that quilt yet, but I'm going to do that soon. So make sure you tune in to next week's video and hopefully I'll have my fabric selected and be able to show you the beautiful colors I'm going to work with for that project. The other project that I am super excited to be involved in is the Vintage Home Quilt Along that is going to be hosted by Fat Quarter Shop featuring a pattern from Lori Holt. This is a beautiful two color quilt that I am really excited to put together. Lori has featured a number of different color palettes in the pattern that you can use to put this together. And she even tells you the skews for each of the fabrics that you should use if you want to make that color combination quilt. I have chosen to go with the raisin colorway, which features fabrics that to me feel more graphite or charcoaly in color. And then of course the white to balance it. All of the fabrics are Lori Holt fabrics. I believe they are basic, so you can do this anytime. It doesn't have to be right now. You can pick up the pattern and the fabric and do it later, or pick up the pattern now and buy the fabric later, whatever works for you. That quilt along is going to start on Tuesday, April 4th, and it's going to end on Tuesday, May 2nd. I've already got my fabric picked out, obviously, and over the next few weeks, I'll need to starch and cut the fabric so that I am ready to go on week one. I've made some progress on two quilt tops and two embroidery projects this week. 
So I've started working on some hand embroidery because this is a great way for me to be creative and still play with needles, thread, and fabric, even when I can't be near my sewing machine. I have two projects that are in progress. The first one is a line work piece by Embroidery and Sage. It's stitching out with black thread, the Tower of London. And I am told that this is something called line work because you're just using one color thread, or maybe they said it was black work, or maybe it's a combination of both, who knows. Either way, I am stitching out the Tower of London with just some black embroidery floss in a kit that I got from Embroidery and Sage, and I'm loving how this is going together. All of their kits are so nice. I bought three or four of them, so I've got a few in the wings waiting for me once this one's done. If I had any feedback to give on this kit, I think the only thing I would say is it would have been nice if the pattern or the design that was printed on the fabric was printed in a color other than black or maybe just muted way down because as I'm stitching black thread over a black design, I'm not getting the satisfaction I would have liked to have while I'm stitching it out. Does that make sense? I hope so. Either way though, wonderful kit, has everything that you need, definitely beginner friendly, and I am enjoying stitching this out. The second embroidery project that I am working on is from Rosanna Diggs Embroidery. She had several small hoops with all of the things that you needed for the kit, and those kits were ranged from beginner to advanced. I picked up a few beginner and even an intermediate one, and I'm really excited to start working on them. The one that I pulled out to work on is a star quilt block and each section of the star features a different embroidery stitch. So it's kind of like a sampler design a little bit. You can buy her kits from her, but you can also just buy the pattern if you have your own hoops, your own threads, and your own embroidery fabric. I will link to both Embroidery Sage and Rosanna Diggs designs in the description box down below if you want to check them out. When I have been in the studio and able to actually sit in front of the sewing machine and work, I have worked on two quilts this week. The first one is the Atomic Starburst quilt, which I'm really excited about. This week, I have taken all of the blocks, the background blocks, the print blocks, and the star blocks, and I have put the sashing on every single piece. This took a while to do, but I found the best way to do it, was not to cut out the sashing pieces according to the template. Instead, I cut a strip of fabric and I just attached the pieces to that strip right alongside. And then once I flipped it over and pressed it, then I cut that sashing piece so that it was the exact width of the block. I think that makes sense. I did that for the top sashing and the right sashing, and I felt like that went together a whole lot easier than putting the sashing pieces pre-cut on the blocks. And that was actually a tip that Donna from Handmade by Ying gave to me because that's exactly what she did to get hers knocked out. So it seems like this is something that a lot of people are doing too. That's my tip for you on that quilt. For the Jolly Bar 4 Quilt Along, we are on week number eight, and this is our final week to make blocks for this sampler quilt. We are now at a stage where all of our blocks are done, and I am excited to see how this project is going to come together. The blocks this week, as always, were pretty easy to put together, and as long as you're paying attention to the direction and orientation of your fabric, it's going to come out the way the pattern says it should. I have been using design boards to lay my fabrics out in the right orientation and double checking them to the layout of the pattern book before I stitch things together because the first couple weeks that I did this quilt along, I always had one piece that was turned the wrong way because I was talking to somebody or watching TV or just wasn't careful with the layout of my fabric before I started sewing them together. So my big tip for you this week, which really stands for any time you're working with fabric that needs to stay a certain way, use a good size design board to lay out your pieces so that they don't move around, they don't blow off your desk, and everything's laid out the way you need them to be before you stitch them together. Of course, the other tip that I have for you is you're going to be doing some more stitch and flips. So if you take that second seam about a half inch away from that first seam, when you flip and trim and press and all the things, you're going to have a bonus half square triangle unit that's going to be a pretty good size. You can iron it out, 
square it up and put it either on the back of that quilt in the borders of this quilt or in a different quilt entirely. I might have only stitched on those two quilts, but I have started a third quilt. This is something that I am really excited about and I have been jonesing to get started on. So I am excited to say that all of my fabric is starched, labeled, and ready to go for the Ursula Minor quilt from Legit Kits. If you guys don't know what Legit Kits is, there's some videos popping up on YouTube. Lots of content creators are starting to jump on the bandwagon for this. And it's because it's FPP that's very, very, very detailed but is also really easy to do. There's no Y seams and anybody can do it. Donna from Handmade by Ying is working on some. I think Tucker is going to be working on some. Ian, the off-kilter crafter, is working on some. And the Cranky Kangaroo has a few videos that shows you how to work on one of those projects from getting your package to actually sewing it all together. My project's going to be a bit smaller because I didn't want to commit to doing a great big project with all this detailed FPP if I wasn't sure that I could stick with it to finish the quilt top. So I chose the Ursula Minor because it is a smaller quilt and it looks like it has less tiny details to it, lots of bigger pieces, and I think it's gonna go together a little bit quicker. This week, as I said, all I did was starch my fabric. I have the pattern ready to go in my binder. I am ready to get sewing, but I'm not going to start sewing until the Atomic Starburst quilt is completed. So if I finish my Atomic Starburst before my next vlog entry, then I will be able to show you some of the progress that I am making on the Ursula Minor quilt, but we're not going to start that until this is completely done. I want to let you know that my weekly vlogs have been traditionally uploaded on Thursday, and next week will be the last week that I'm going to upload it on Thursday. Starting the week after that, I'm going to start uploading these on Tuesdays because that works better for my schedule. If you remember back to the January when I kicked this whole thing off I told you I was going to do a weekly video through the middle of March and then I would assess whether or not I wanted to continue that and the truth is I love making this format and it appears that you guys like watching the videos too so I want to continue doing this for a little while longer I just have to pick a day that works better for my schedule and Tuesday is that day that's my weekly update thank you for checking it out and I'll see you guys all next week bye